But let's go over a few really important and I think fascinating facts about the universe. So we're going to talk about galaxies and light year and stellar clusters, constellations, shooting stars, and uh, well, nebula, or the plural, which is nebulae, although some people call it nebulas. In any case, we're going to start with what's a light year. So I think that's maybe a good, a good first place to start. Now the, the thing is that distances in space, so maybe we'll see this here, distances in space are huge. So, so for example, just, uh, you know, just meters or kilometers or, you know, miles or things like that, just, they're not enough. We need, we need really far distances. So we need, we need distances that are much, much bigger than just meters or kilometers or miles or things like that. We need some sort of better unit of distance. So we actually use um, what a light year is. So one light year, so we'll say it like it's one light year, is otherwise known as one ly for short. So one ly, it equals the distance that light travels in one year. And that's because in space, at least, uh, so in a vacuum, uh, which is what space is pretty much, um, the light travels in one year. Uh, so in space, which is pretty much a vacuum, the fastest thing that we know of is light. A light goes the speed of light, oddly enough. Now the speed of light in a vacuum is one thing, but it turns out the speed of light in water or in other materials is different. So here we're going to define it, of course, as in a vacuum. Now light is something that goes really, really fast. Now how fast is light? I mean, what, what is the speed of light? We actually call it c. So c is the speed of light. And that equals, at least in SI units, is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So in other words, uh, well, maybe we can put this in more useful terms. That's 300,000, because if we want this in kilometers, there is um, 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So that means I have to take away three of these right here. So that means it would be um, 3 times 10 to the 5, which is this, uh, kilometers per second. So, the, I mean, imagine just one kilometer. Now imagine 300,000 of those, and that's how far light travels in just one second. So it's super fast. So now if you're light traveling the speed of light, going 300,000 kilometers every single second, imagine how far you travel in a whole year. That's what we call a light year. Now let's actually calculate what one light year is then. Well, uh, what we can do then is maybe we'll use something about the velocity. So velocity is distance over time. I'm being a little bit sloppy here. I should say the speed is distance over time because I would say the velocity is the displacement over time, but let's not be too picky here. So the speed is distance over time. Okay, well that means if I want the distance, because I want to try to find out what this is here, I want to get d by itself. So d then is just, well, if I want d on its own, I have to get rid of the t. So if I multiply both sides by t, that gets, you know, t over t would cancel out. So I'd have a vt here. So that means the distance is the velocity times the time. In other words, if I want to know this then, then one light year equals however fast light goes, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Now here I'm going to put the units like this, meters per second like this. Now I've got to multiply that by the time. In other words, what is one year? Okay, so I'm going to multiply that by one year. Now if I stopped right there, I would have my units, because this would be correct, but this would have units of meter years per second, which isn't very useful. I want to get the distance of one light year in just meters. So my goal is going to be to get rid of some units here. Okay, my, my goal is to get rid of these. So what I want to try to do is get my meters here like this or here, but I don't want the years here. I don't want that. So what I have to do then is, is try to do something where I can get rid of the units of years and maybe even get rid of the seconds and see what we can do here. So what we can do, this is a trick I learned in chemistry, but actually really holds true here. What we can do is say, well, that 
uh, if we know some units, we know that there are 365 days in one year. Now the reason I put it like this is because then the units of years divided by years, those cancel out. So years over years, those are gone, which is pretty handy. Because now if I stopped there, now I'd say 3 times 10 to the 8 times 365, and that will give me this light year in, uh, well, days per second, or something like this right here. So that, uh, well, meters, days per second. Now, of course, I don't want that. I want to get rid of the days here. So how do I do that? Um, well, I, if I know how many some things are in a day, I do. I know that there are 24 hours in one day. And if I do it like this, now of course I could choose to do days on the top and hours on the bottom, but then they wouldn't cancel out the days here. So I want the days here to disappear. So now I have this in hours. Hours, of course, per second, which isn't very useful. So maybe I should keep going then. Do I know something else, something in per hour? Yes, I do. I know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. So that would get rid of my hours. So now I'd have it in minutes. And this may seem really annoying. I'm only going to show you once. Um, but it turns out then we can go, well, there's 60 seconds in one minute. So if we do that, now I get things in just seconds. And look what magically happened. These seconds cancelled out those seconds. So now look at this. All the units work out. There's meters. Everything else is gone. So I just have this in meters, which means one light year then equals or well, whatever this number is times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. At least a 60 times 60 is easy. That's 6 times 6 which is 36 and add two zeros. So I'm going to get out my trusty calculator. Where is that? There it is. Whew. So I'm going to get out my calculator and actually do this. So I want 3 times 10 which is this little E button here times 10 to the 8 I'll press enter maybe just to be safe. There we go. There's three with eight zeros. I want to multiply that by 24 times 365 times 3,600. Press enter. And I get 9.46 times 10 to the 15. So that means this is what one light year is. It's 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. And that's maybe a useful unit here. So I'm going to put a big square bracket around it. But you see now we didn't have to, I mean, I don't recommend you memorize this, but uh, this is something very useful, I think, that we can actually take a look and see how how long is a light year. It's this many meters. Or I could say it's uh, 9.46 times 10 to the uh, 12 kilometers. Or I'm going to keep going like that. But basically, this is a very, very large unit of time, or of distance, sorry. Now, light year almost implies a unit of time. You might think light year, oh, year is a unit of time, but it's not. One light year is a distance that light travels in one year. So that's really important. Now, you might think, okay, well, and how far are different objects out there? Well, the nearest star to us, okay, uh, that one's actually just over four light years away. It means it takes light four years to get from that star to us. It's actually called Proxima Centauri. But, uh, so that just gives an idea that even the closest other star to ours is four light years away, which makes communication with them very difficult. Now, what's really interesting, though, is that our own sun, for example, is actually eight light minutes away. Now, why do I say light minutes? Well, I think you can figure it out. That's the distance tra light travels in one minute. So that means uh, when we look at the sun, you know, if we're actually staring at it, uh, we're actually not seeing the sun as it is now. We're seeing it as it was eight minutes ago, which means if the sun blew up exactly this moment, we wouldn't see the explosion until eight minutes from now. And then, of course, it gets even worse. For example, let's say you're looking at uh, something on Mars. Well, depending on where Mars is in its orbit, so, I mean, we might be, for example, if this is the sun and this is the Earth here, Let's say this is the Earth, and let's say this here is Mars. Well, if this is Mars over here. If we're at the closest to each other, uh, then, you know, it could be as little as, uh, I think it's four light minutes away. But what if we're over here and Mars is over here? That's possible, because we orbit sort of faster, and our Mars goes around slower than us. If that's the case, then uh, Mars can be as much as 20 light minutes away. 
which means if we want to communicate to those little rovers, those little robots on Mars, which there are currently some uh, crawling around, uh, we have to wait up to 20 minutes. In other words, uh, we have to think 20 minutes ahead. You can't just drive the robot and say, okay, stop. You have to think uh, 20 minutes ago, what should I have told it? Because, of course, uh, if you say stop right now, it will take 20 minutes before the robot even gets the message that you told it to stop. So you have to be very, very aware of these things. So I think it's really interesting to see how this stuff actually has an effect. And in fact, what I think is amazing then is we were looking at this picture before here. And this thing right here tells us something about how we're looking back in time, literally. Which means when we look at this night sky, when you see those dots, those are all different stars out there. And those stars are on the order of many light years away. Which means in every sense of the word, you're looking back in time. So in other words, when you look up at the sky, you're seeing a light from these different stars uh, as they were when they left the star. But it took a long time for that light to get to you. Here's an example of one. This one right here. I don't know if you recognize this uh, particular constellation. I don't know if you know your constellations very well, but it turns out this one is actually supposed to look like a person. So the Greeks actually thought this one right here, in the northern hemisphere at least, this is a very easy one to spot. I find this the easiest constellation to see. Um, I think it looks like a big R, but actually the Greeks said this was supposed to be a hunter. So this is sort of supposed to be a guy here, and this one here is supposed to be his sort of bow. So this is Orion the hunter. So he's supposed to have a bow, and he's supposed to be, you know, shooting stuff. Um, now, yeah, I think it's you have to use your imagination a little bit, but there's one actual star that I've actually done a little bit of work on. This one right here is actually called Betelgeuse, which I think is a funny name. It's spelled like this, though. I think it's an Arabic name originally, so I'm probably massacring the name. It's like Betelgeuse or something, or Geis. I don't know. But in any case, this particular star, it's actually a red giant, which is kind of cool. That means it's a star that's so big, if we replaced it with our sun, it would completely envelop the Earth. In fact, it would go, it would envelop uh, Mercury, Venus, uh, the Earth, Mars, and it would be partway out to Jupiter. It's that big. But what's cool is that it's around, it's roughly 650 light years away, which means when you look at this particular star, you're seeing how it was 650 years ago. That's how it looked. Now it's a red giant, and we think it might actually blow up. And when it blows up, we think it's going to make what's called a supernova, which means a really big explosion. Now, how soon do we mean? Uh, really soon. Could it have already happened? Sure. What if it happened 649 years ago? What if it actually blew up? We won't see the explosion until maybe, you know, next year. So that's what's so cool about looking up at the sky, is you're looking back in time in every sense of the word. I think that is really, really cool.